Okay, so the question today, guys, is, is should you run a subcompact on your bike? Now, a few companies make subcompacts, SFA, Praxis, Campignolo, and there's also Absolute Black make them as well. So they're around, and there's a few people who actually run them and put them on their road bikes. Now, I know there's the argument, just get fitter, but some people are getting older like me, and also some people want to change their road bike into a semi-gravel bike, or they want to go bike packing, they want to put a more, bit more weight on the bike, and they want to go into the mountains. And getting those extra gears can really make a difference. And what you need to realize with going to easier gears, you're not really making it easier. It's just giving you the ability to maintain your cadence and your ability at your watts to go at a slower speed. It's not got to do with fitness. It's got to do with your ability at that point in time, riding that bike, how much watts you can put out, to the incline to get the gearing and cadence that you like to maintain. So let's roll that intro and let's have a look, a closer look at subcompacts. Now subcompacts are really good because you can get your bike to have a gearing that is greater than one to one you can get a, a 50-34, but the compacts can be either 32 on the inner ring, 48-32, or 46-30. That's about the smallest I think you can get before you run out of material on the inner ring because the, the, the BCD of the Spider is too large for you to go to any smaller rings because the bolt is actually fitting into the, or, or is too close to the teeth of the ring. I don't know how some of the manufacturers got it down to 30, that's pretty difficult. I think the bolt must actually sit partially in the tooth because it's very, very close, but you can get them. And the beauty is, is that the, the newer group sets now can fit much bigger cassettes. Like even with the 12 speed Campagnolo, you can fit a 34, 11, 34 standard. That's just, you can buy that chorus cassette. So if you've got a 34, 34, then you've got a one-to-one, -one, but if you go 32, 34, you're less than one. So you're getting that little bit more extra gearing. So that's really good if you want to modify your bike or you want to get a bit easy gearing or you just want the bike to be a bit more cruisy because you're putting stuff on the bike to go backpacking. So what are some of the problems that you can run into when you're fitting that compact? Now the problem is, is you've got a pretty big gear spread and also a lot of the road bikes, the, the brazons that are pretty much on most of the bikes, which some of them do have the clamps. If you've got a clamp, you've got no problem, you can move that down. But if you've got a brazon, generally they're designed around a 5034 smallest front crank ring. So if you wanna to go to a 4832 or a 4630, you've gotta drop that derailleur to keep the, the distance, the manufacturer specification distance away from the chain ring. And this can be a bit of an issue because you, your derailleur is too high from the chain ring because when you hit the bottom of the, the brazon, you can't go any further. So you may need to buy an adapter and they are available, which allows you to drop that derailleur down. But I'm running the Camp Agnolo and on my bike, my Fonda Rest, I can actually get it to work. It's, it's, I've got enough movement there, but you could be have a bit of problems if you go to a 4630, you might struggle. And it depends also where the manufacturers put that brazen on, on the frame to how much adjustment you have on that front derailleur. So that's one problem you can have, but it can be addressed with an adapter. The other problem is that I found with my setup is because you've got such a big gear spread, I'm running 11 and 36 on the back, which is kind of outside of the design of the the group set. I am running a road link and a, a longer road derailleur, but when I get into the the biggest gears, or should, should I say the hardest gears, which is the smallest cogs, the when I go from the, the 12 to 11 in the back, it's a little bit slow because the the chain is becoming very loose. It's right at the edge of its tension. And that's one little problem you can have. And also you lose a little bit of the top end, but if, you're, if it's a rain bike or if it's you're going touring and you're climbing hills, your top end speed's not such a big deal. So you don't really worry about that so much. You're just shifting all of your ability further down your ratio so you can maintain your watts and your cadence, but do that 
at a slower speed. So in conclusion, should you fit a subcompact? Well, it depends on your application. Um, if you're a pretty fit guy and you can push the standard gears we've got now, then that's fine. And if you can do that with adding weight to your bike or you want to have a gravel bike where you want slower gearing and you don't mind grinding, that's fine. But if you're the sort of person and I'm that sort of person who likes to maintain a, a very small window of cadence, then a subcompact can be really, really good because when you're going at those slower speeds, you still got those extra gears so you can maintain that cadence at that lower wattage and you still then can feel comfortable and put the power out that you want to put out at the cadence and power that you like to. So it's a really, really good option. And the reality is it's not a massive change to your bike. You just need to be able to, you can put a road link on. A lot of the new group steps already have longer derailers like the 12 speeds so they can accommodate a lot more teeth teeth gap which is your chief cap, teeth capacity is the word I'm looking for teeth capacity so you can fit these on because they're allowing bigger cassettes on the back now but if you have got a problem you can add a road link and the road links are pretty cheap you, they're not expensive there's a lot of copies now in the market because the road link's been out for so long or you can fit a longer derailleur I've got an old Cena one on my rain bike, which works really well with the Roadling. So yeah, it's a little bit of mucking around, but in the whole scheme of things, it's relatively inexpensive to do. Okay, you've got to buy the, the buy the front chain ring. If you've got Durace, sorry, if you've got Shimano, then you can buy the absolute black rings and they just bolt straight on. And then you can you can make it so your bike can be a lot heavier, or you can tackle a lot steeper climbs. Well, anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think of subcompacts? Do you think that they're a bit of a gimmick? Or do you think that they can really help people who are not as strong a riders? And that's why I really like them, because not everyone can, is really that fit, or they might be a casual rider, and they put these subcompacts on their bikes, and what they can do is, is they can go and then ride a steeper hills, steeper inclines, and enjoy it, and they're not, they're not grinding up those hills. That's why I think that they're a really good tool that you can add to your bike. Now, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Remember to like because it really helps the algorithm. And don't be a ninja watcher and subscribe if you're just someone who's a casual watcher. That would be really appreciated. And I will see you next vid. Cheers.